Today, fellow Canadians, I gotta share with you the ways that I'm utilizing the first time home buyers account, the FHSA account, to actually buy our first property and start building our down payment that we're looking to buy next year. Even though this account was introduced this year, I'm gonna show you some loopholes, some things that I've learned that are really gonna help me fast track my payment, my down payment to buying a house and the way I'm utilizing it between a corporate account, my regular accounts, the tax advantages, the little loopholes and things I've learned. So if you'd appreciate it, if you can pull some value out of this and see how you can apply it to your own life, just hit that like button. But let's get right into this with first and foremost, the idea of this account. It's a combination between an RSP and a TFSA. A TFSA, you have to pay tax on the money you earn, you get to put it in this account, this tax sheltered umbrella where you can earn dividends, capital gains, tax-free. Whereas an RRSP, a registered retirement savings account, you don't pay any tax on the money earned. If you put it in there, you actually get a tax refund. If you earn money from your job, you already pay tax on it. You put it in this tax sheltered account, you immediately get that refund. You don't pay any tax. And then you can earn capital gains and dividends tax-free into the future, where when you withdraw against an RRSP, you have to pay tax on it then. It's a deferred tax account. Whereas a TFSA, you pay tax up front, but you can pull it out later tax-free. This is kind of combining both of those things together. You get a tax deduction on the money once it's put in and a completely tax-free once you pull it out. It's like the best of both worlds. The caveat is you can only use it to buy a house. However, down the road, if you don't end up buying a house, you can actually recontribute this back to your RSP and defer it as like extra tax savings down the road, which is kind of cool in my opinion. But what I find really intriguing here is for those of you that might not have $8,000 initially because the every year they're going to let you put $8,000 into it, I believe up to about four thousand dollars you can immediately start transferring money from your rsp to this fhsa now people think there's already advantages with an rsp to buy a house because they'll let you draw against it to buy a house tax-free however it's caveated that you have to pay it back over i think five years so any money you pull out of your rsp to buy a house you got to pay it back baby but with this account transfer to an fhsa account you can pull it out and never have to pay it back so the government's giving you a lot of fun little loophole deals to take advantage of this stuff now firstly before we talk about the loopholes that i'm looking to take advantage of we first and foremost have to talk about the goals what are we trying to achieve well me and my fiance it's be wife we're looking to kind of get a condo we're looking at that price point of around seven hundred thousand dollars in this higher interest rated environment it is very tough to be buying a house but we have a lot of savings and we're trying to do this without touching our tax advantaged accounts so we have a lot of investments outside of our retirement accounts and we built up a decent amount we're looking to build up for another year so we're looking to put about a 50 percent deposit so let's say we're looking for seven hundred thousand dollar give or take property we'll be putting about three hundred fifty thousand dollars down now 5.59% over three years is the best we're going to get uh, because I'd like to renew it in three years because I'm presuming the interest rates are going to come down by that point. And we want to amortize it over 30 years. The longer out, the better. I look to put more um, down a month than obviously the minimum on a 30 year, but I just want to make those payments as minimum as possible in case you run into some tougher environments where you lose your job or something like that. So for now, let's just say we're not looking to put any extra down, no insurance. Let's keep this dead bare bone basic, right? If we calculate the payments, this will be about $1,992 a month. We're going to have HOA fees, condo fees, probably another 500 give or take a month i mean you're gonna be talking about property taxes another 250 a month so we're looking at you know total payments just to keep the property floating basically probably around i'm going to say between 2600 to 3000 a month really not that bad that's less and right around the point of rent i mean to, to rent a decent two bed two bath you're going to be spending around 3000 a month the scary horrifying thing about this is the bank right now they increased what they want for minimum deposits. They want a minimum of 20% down now for most people, which I don't think is even enough. I really don't. I mean, just do the math on it. A $700,000 property, that's what, $140,000, which leaves you with a $560,000 uh, mortgage. Again, 3%, let's amortize it over 30 years. Again, just taking a look at what those monthly payments are gonna be, that's 3,200 roughly. Tap on the, you know, three to 500 a month, give or take in HOA, 200 extra a month in property taxes. I mean, insurance, all that extra stuff, like you're getting damn near close to $4,000 a month. If you can rent for less than you can own, always rent. There's just no point in paying this stupid fee. So if, unless you have a 50% down on these properties, I don't know who's affording to buy this. Like I said, I could rent a really good two bed, two bath between 2,800 and 2,000 in the GTA. I mean, we're not talking about Toronto. I'm not looking to rent in Toronto. Toronto just, ugh, it's like Gotham. You ever walk around downtown Toronto at night these days? It's the sky. I remember walking downtown and felt safe when I was a teenager. Now I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to be here anymore. But talking about these loopholes, advantages, what we're looking to do here. So my portfolio today, again, worth around 300 95,000. I got 42,000 in cash spread between my regular accounts and my corporate account. And this is where things get messy. And this is why I'm glad we have the HFHSA. Firstly, what I'm looking to do is I have this really big investment between my retirement accounts and my regular brokerage accounts of $157,000 in the Vanguard high dividend yield ETF. So in this account, 
my personal brokerage account, I have just under 40,000 invested in this and I'm gonna pull this out. Like I'm probably gonna sell all of this because again, it's not tax advantaged, it's just sitting here. I'm not gonna sell it out, hopefully this loss. If I'm lucky, it'll rally back a bit and I can slowly start selling it out into the end of this year. And again, I won't be paying any real taxes on it, especially if it's down when I'm selling it, right? But there's 40 grand and again, keep in mind that I do have that nice uh, 40 grand in cash here. So when you're looking at that, that's an immediate access to about $80,000, right? Which is not near enough. We gotta build up a little bit more than that. But again, continuing on here. So the 40 in cash, 40 from VDY. I'm also looking at my corporation, right? So within my corporate account here, guys, I'm not looking to draw any of the investments because if I pulled this into my personal name, which I have a full-time job, um, I'm gonna get taxed like crazy. I'm gonna lose so much of this money. But luckily, because when I started my corporation, I actually put money into it and I used expenses for my personal accounts. So I actually, my corporation owes me tax-free around $35,000, $36,000, which I'm gonna be building up cash in this corporation, again, trying not to touch the investments I have in here. So I can pull that cash out 100% tax-free in this given year. But what I'm looking to do is make more money beyond that this year. And what I can do with the FHSA is at the end of this year, take another 8,000, pay myself out that on top of the 35, put that extra eight into the FHSA, completely avoid any taxes on it. As soon as the year rolls over, take another 8,000 out of my corporation. So there's 16,000, 8,000 right at the beginning of next year, put that into the FHSA. So there, boom, $16,000 completely tax-free. And I can pull that money out in the same year I deposit it and still get the same tax deduction. That's what's so beautiful about that account. And my fiance is in a different position. She's a full-time job. She's not running a business, but what she can do is because again, she has her tax advantaged accounts, but she has a, a decent chunk in personal brokerage accounts because she bought stocks at the bottom of the damn market in March of 2020. So what can she do? Well, she can start selling off some of those individual stocks that she has sitting in a regular brokerage account, put it into the FHSA and avoid any of the capital gains so she can get access to that money tax free. And between all of that, guys, it's going to be a lot more work because obviously in this very moment, I'd have to pull some money out of a TFSA to put a 50% down or an RSP if I wanted to, but we're pretty confident we'll get there by the end of this year to early next year, get married, and then hopefully have that opportunity of looking to buy our first home. Um, and I've known in the past that I've talked about moving to Alberta. If we moved to Alberta, the, I mean, we could literally pretty much semi-retire right now. I mean, Alberta is so cheap. You could buy a decent condo home for like two, 300 grand. I mean, you could travel and do whatever you want, but we do believe that family is a key to longevity in life and happiness and all our family is pretty much here. And I still like to support our family for now. And I think we're in the means of income and savings to make this feasibly affordable and kind of just get our lives kicked off and uh, in, a, in a way that, you know, was damn near impossible for the last 10 years, the way the housing market's been going. But I'll pass that question off to you. I'd love to know how you're taking advantage of this stuff, what you think about the housing market, uh, all down in the comment section below.